it, um, it was it was a, a fan. I, I lived in um, Paddington way back when. I had mates and things, and um, and we do the usual thing of go you know ambling around, play football, this that and the other. And I think was one evening we were uh, in Regent's Park and heading back, and my mate Gordon, who's thank God has got a phenomenal memory. He, he remembers where we were, and he said you were just getting over a cold. We were doing this that, and the other. He said, oh, let's go back via. Abbey Road Studios. Now, I didn't know where they were. I knew roughly, obviously, St. John's Wood, but didn't know exactly. He did. And, uh, and we went to Abbey Road Studios. And, um, and the, the cars were there. There was, you know, M M McCartney had a DB, DB5 or whatever it was, and Ferrari, and Lennon's Ferrari. We thought, ah, the guys are there. And, and we hung around and saw them. And that was kind of initially just, you know, Beatles and a quick hello and what have you. Um, because then, it's, it's really weird, if you were willing to wait until about nine o'clock at night, all the, the, the young fans, the girl fans, would go. It was, the, it was that era when you did as your mum and dad said and you were home by nine. And so you had the place to yourself. So we were up on the steps of EMI. And we got to know quite well um, a young girl then called Lizzie Bravo. I don't know whether her name means anything to you. She's one of those rare people who sang on a Beatles record. She was there, a Brazilian girl, still in touch with her, still see her, and she still, she has this website, <laughs> everything Beatle on there. But she's quite a celebrity because, because of that. This one Sunday in, um, in February, very, very cold Sunday, she and about three of the Apple Scruffs were on the doorstep of Abbey Road. The, the guy there said, look, come in between the two sets of doors at Abbey Road Studios, keep warm. Um, and uh, mid-afternoon or whatever, McCartney came out and said, can any of you girls sing? And so Lizzie said, well, I've done some singing. And this other English girl said, yeah, and so have I. And so they were invited in. And they were doing Across the Universe, um, which the, was it on um, Let It Be, Abbey Road? Let It Be, I think, it made it onto that. But they were doing an early version of it for World, World Wildlife Fund. And the two girls sang on it. So we got to know the, well, her very well indeed. And she sort of said, oh, if you want to go and see George, I can tell you where his place is. And I can tell you where John's place is. I mean, she's a true fan. And Gordon and I just literally pre-cars and everything, caught two trains from Waterloo or whatever it was, <laughs> and a bus to Claygate, and found Harrison's place following her directions and walked up to it. Um, and this matte black Ferrari passed us. And it was like, oh, Lennon, my God, Lennon. And found this place, Kin Kinforns, I think is the, the bungalow that um, George Harrison had. Um, and we went there, and of course you were kind of nervous. We had a, a longest drive up to the, uh, the bungalow itself, and we'd seen Lennon arrive, and his car was parked up there with George's. We thought, what do we do? What do we do? You know, do we pluck up courage? And Gordon was game for anything, so we went up there, and, and Patty Boyd came out, and said, you know, hi, very, very, very hugely polite and things. And we said, you know, could we get an autograph or a photograph, you know, with George and John? And he said, well, they're, they're busy talking at the moment. Um, and she said, do you, have you come far? So we said, we come up from London. She said, well, do you want, do you want to come in for some breakfast? And uh, we said, no, we felt awful. We felt like we were intruding. You think, my God, we could have actually gone in and, and had breakfast. But, um, but we waited and, and, and the guys came out and were, were, were great. And in fact, you know, and this is purely as Beatle fans, but the, you tell people that now, and hence this, this, this photo I keep, because we had it for the, um, we've been working with some Americans and they just love that side of things. They said, oh, send us that, send us that. And cannot believe that they were just so accessible. You just, you know, you, you spend time. We, one, one Christmas, we were outside McCartney's house. And again, it's my, my mate Gordon. And the girls are gone. And it was just the two of us. And we were waiting outside. It was snow on the ground, pretty hefty snow on the ground. And uh, McCartney's brother, Mike McGear, do you know, from Scaffold, he, he turned up, pre-mobiles and things, pressed the bell, and I think McCartney must have had, we knew he was in, but he must have had a belly full of the fans ringing and the rest of it. And you, quite, you, you ring the bell and you hear this <laughs> very distinctive voice kind of going, oh, house. And you go, um, Paul, he's, he's not in. You go, yeah, okay. <laughs> or, you know, this, this is the butler or whatever it was. Um, but anyway, we said to Mike, Paul is in. Um, so he said, okay, fine. So he went off to find a public phone to then go and phone his brother in the house and say, look, I'm arriving in about five minutes, and went in. Uh, beforehand, because we'd given this information, we said, you know, could you ask Paul if we can, could we take a photograph, um, what have you, and we waited for a bit and a bit and a bit. And the, the two of them came out with Paul's sheepdog, Martha, this big old English sheepdog, 
and we had a snowball fight in Cavendish Avenue and uh, took a few photographs, which sadly were loaned to someone and I've lost them and they've gone, which is a bit of a shame. But um, there's only a couple because you only ever took you know, one or two photos with flash bulbs and that sort of stuff. But yeah, no, we had a, a snowball fight with Paul McCartney and his brother and the sheepdog and Gordon and myself in Cavendish Avenue.